Brendan Koji. I'm a PM at Modern Treasury. And as was just introduced, Modern Treasury builds infrastructure for companies that move money. So uh, we work with fintechs like Revolut and Marketa. We work with marketplaces like ClassPass and Outdoorsy. And really our principle when we build is we want to provide building blocks that can be used independently or together uh, to build really powerful apps. So I'm going to talk about just one of those building blocks. We have a few others, but one I want to talk about is called Ledgers. And Ledgers is a managed double entry database for tracking money. So most of you know, maybe all of you know that uh, ledgering money movements when you're building an app is really non-trivial. And as you add features, as you scale, uh, you start running into challenges around things like concurrency. So we talked to a lot of fintechs out there, figured out kind of the best patterns around ledgering. And I'll point those out as I go. So hopefully, even if you're building your own ledger, uh, in-house to track your money movements. You can learn from some of these patterns that we built into our managed ledger. So I'm on our website here. Uh, actually, as of today, you can come on our website and start using ledgers for free. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to an account that I've already loaded up here. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is create a ledger object. So we'll do that here. By the way, everything you do in our dashboard, you can also do through our API. So all our API docs are also public. Feel free to poke around in there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and create a ledger here. And I can select any ISO currency here that I'm ledgering. I can also select a custom currency, which I'll do here. So uh, let's make a USDC ledger. And let's define USDC here. We just have to provide a currency exponent, which is how many significant digits come after that decimal point. So for USDC, that's actually six. So there's my ledger object and I can start tracking uh, balances and transactions in there. I'm gonna click over to this ledger that I've built out uh, here for an app that we're calling Billfold. And Billfold is just a simple digital, digital wallet. So you can imagine users can deposit money in this app. They can send money to each other or they can withdraw that money. And there are a few objects uh, in this ledger system uh, that I wanna point out. The first is accounts. So accounts are any kind of uh, balance that we want to track in our app. So every time a user signs up for Billfold, Jane Doe or John Doe here, I have ledger accounts which track their balances in the app. We also have balances for our cash and uh, balance called card settlement, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, the second object that we have in ledgers is transactions, and these are the actual money movements in our app. And all of these transactions are actually money movements from one place to another place. So this is the double entry component of ledgering. Um, this is kind of one of the patterns that we saw that really good fintechs use is they have credits and debits and all the uh, transactions that they actually ledger in their app are double entry. So we definitely recommend that. Now, these transactions could be things that are happening in our app, like if one user pays another, that's just something we put in our ledger, or they could be happening outside our app in any kind of payment system. So uh, you might be using uh, a third party provider to move money around, uh, you would move that money and also ledger it in this system. Um, one other thing I want to point out as a really useful pattern ledgering is this status. So you can see these ledger transactions are all posted. Um, transactions can also be in a pending state. We found that when you're ledgering, you really want to have these two state transactions to model money that's in flight versus money that's settled. So for instance, ACH payments that aren't settled, uh, card authorizations that aren't cleared yet, those would be pending transactions. The useful thing when you have multi-state transactions is you can see on these ledger accounts, we actually have two different balances. One is a posted balance, which is how much money is actually settled in this account. And the other is a pending balance, which also includes money that's in flight. So let's go ahead and start ledgering uh, using API calls. And the first thing I'll show you is, let's say Jane wants to load some money into her wallet. So there are two things we need to do. Uh, the first thing we need to do is actually move the money. So we need to actually pull the money from Jane's bank account into our own. And the second is we need to ledger that money movement so that uh, we have that uh, movement of funds in our source of truth. And here, I'm actually gonna move the money between bank accounts also using Modern Treasury. I'm gonna use a different product, our payments product. And because we're using Modern Treasury for both those things, we make your life a little bit simpler uh, and let you do that all in one API call. So you can see here in Postman, uh, I have an API call to our payment orders endpoint. 
Um, here I'm specifying bank accounts to Jane's bank account to pull money from and our bank account to put money into. And I'm also specifying the ledger transaction uh, with individual ledger entries on different accounts uh, that shows that money movement in our ledger. Uh, the last pattern that we found is really useful in a ledger uh, is if you have a separate ledger service, you really want to guarantee item potency. Here we do that doing this field called external ID, and we're only going to process an external ID once. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this payment order. There we go. Looks like we've created a payment. And if we come back, come back over into our ledger transactions, we'll see this pending ledger transaction right here. So a few things to note here. Um, number one, you can see this status of the pending transaction of the transaction is pending. Um, and we'll actually, because you're using modern treasury payments, automatically update that status as it goes through uh, the settlement process. The second thing, and this is a pattern that we really recommend when you're ledgering, is when a ledger transaction is pending, it's actually mutable. And that's really useful for things like card authorizations where you might want to change the authorization amount on the ledger while it's still in progress. Uh, the really important thing if you have mutable transactions is you keep a full audit trail of all those changes. So at any point you can go back and reconstruct what the state was, of the ledger was using this audit trail. And you can see also we link over here to the payment in Modern Treasury. So I can click into that and see the payment that that links to. Okay, so that's how you make a payment, uh, pull in money from a user and ledger it as well. The one other pattern I wanna show you is something that we see a lot of users do, which is uh, connect card products to ledgers. So a lot of folks will use a card issuer like Lithic or Marketa, uh, and specifically a really popular pattern that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with is just-in-time funding. What just-in-time funding lets you do is instead of one of those providers keeping track of the card balance in a static way, you can actually manage the ledger and the card balance and be in that card authorization flow so that you have full control over the balances on the user's cards. So specifically, if I click into Jane's wallet here, you can see I've attached some metadata here with a card ID. So you can imagine we might get a webhook from Lithic um, with this card ID in it uh, saying, Jane's trying to swipe this card, uh, should we authorize that? And if we go back into Postman, we're gonna wanna do a few things. <laughs> the first thing is we want to check Jane's card balance to make sure she does have enough funds so I'm just hitting our ledger accounts endpoint there. You can see we get back both the pending and posted balances. We're going to want to check the posted balance there to see what funds she actually has available. And when you're dealing with cards, there are two things you want to do when you're ledgering. The first thing is making sure that you can really operate fast at scale. Right? If you're crossing a lot of these card swipes, you want to make sure that you're responding to these webhooks really fast because someone's waiting with a card at the end, other end. Uh, the other thing is you want to prevent race conditions. So how do we know that if we authorize this card transaction, the ledger hasn't updated since uh, we checked this balance? And the way we'll do that here is using optimistic locking. Uh, and what that means is when we get this response, we get a locked version with that account, uh, with Jane's wallet balance. And we're going to refer to that locked version when we create this authorization transaction in the ledger. So we can see we're actually at locked version 19. I'll reference that in this card authorization transaction. And that's only going to succeed. That's only going to allow this ledger transaction to be created if that lock version hasn't changed. We also let you lock on a minimum or maximum balance, uh, but I won't show that flow here. So if we go back into the ledger, we'll see this authorization transaction. Uh, we've actually moved these funds over from Jane's wallet and set them aside and into a card settlement account. And what uh, Lithic will do is pull those funds at the end of the day. And the last thing we do is when Lithic tells us that this card transaction uh, has cleared, we can go ahead and post that. Uh, so here we're just going to refer to that uh, transaction that we just created. I'll grab that ID. And we'll change that ledger transaction to posted. And once the ledger transaction is posted, it's fully immutable. Uh, it's sealed in our ledger and we can go back into our history and see the full history of changes to that transaction. So those are two patterns of how you use an external system uh, with this central ledger. The other cool thing is anything that happens in your app, let's say Jane pays John or John pays Jane, 
Uh, that's a ledger only transaction. You don't have to talk to an external system. You just talk to the ledger and it's a essentially instant payment within your app. So hopefully I've given a quick tour of the patterns, but this gives you some sense of good practices in ledgering and how you use a central ledger. Um, and thanks for your time. Excited to chat more.